Okay, I think that's most of us back in the room. Hope you enjoyed that. I thought that was a fantastic lunch. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted to introduce as our first guest speaker this afternoon, Warrant Officer John Connor and the Chief. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say any more. Um, this is part of a theme from last year where we had clients who work in unique situations and hopefully, well, not hopefully, it will be very interesting. Thank you, John. Lovely, thank you very much, Andrew. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Ross John Connor. First of all, has anybody in here served in the Royal Navy at all? Brilliant, you're all allowed to ask questions in so you don't try and catch us out on anything that we say. And <laughs> secondly, another apology. Um, on our first slide, I was having email problems with Callum last week and saying about pictures and what have you. And I was trying to suss out pictures that I can't have this one, I can't have that one. So Callum has put up there an American aircraft carrier. So I do apologise for that. <laughs> However, we know it's not our aircraft carrier because there's actually planes and helicopters on it. You know, we've got the platform in it, but we're still waiting on the aircraft. But the good news is Callum did say he will buy the first round tonight for everybody for his faux pas. So well done, Callum, on that one. So uh, we will go to a bit of introduction here. Well, so my name's Ronald John Connor. I've been in the Navy now for 32 years and three days as of Saturday. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's prime, yeah. you get less of a murder, I think, on that sense. I've um, had a varied career, I've been on frigates, destroyers, I've served seven years on the Royal Yacht Britannia, I've then gone on to bigger ships, I've been on uh, HMS Illustrious Aircraft Carrier and HMS Bulwark, which is a landing craft, uh, amphibious assault ship, this is where I was serving with Gavin. And I'll get the funny in now before Gavin does, that is not me when I joined the Navy at the Royal Navy Cookery <laughs> Training School, looking at it there. So I'll just pass it over to Gavin now. Well, good afternoon everyone, um, Chief Petty Officer Gavin Tuak, um, as known as the Chief. Um, so, I joined the Navy in May 2003, 16 years done now. Prior to that, I was a, a full-time chef from leaving school, um, so I've got a chef background. I, the current job I'm in now is TriCat support, so anyone know about TriCat, other than the Fretwell personnel? So, so um, TriCat is the catering software that we use in the armed forces. Um, I do the support side of things, got over 100 users. It's been in service since 1998. So when Fred was going to correct me now, no. um, and we're looking ahead now, basically because it's a very access database um, application, very noddy kind of thing. We're trying to move ahead, but as we learned from the armed forces, it takes time. We're about 20 years behind everyone else. So, um, so yeah. So um, I'm literally leaving the job um, in next week, moving on to passage new, and I'll be handing over to my relief that couldn't be here today. So hopefully he'll get the nice shiny new application to take forward, and, and everyone will be happy. Um, I say I've got a varied background, um, different types of ships, type 22s, 23s and the amphibious ship. Um, I'm sure we'll touch on the different ways we do catering on, on these units. Um, and obviously please ask questions and go through. Right, Gavin isn't moving on because he's rubbish, but the, the cycle that it goes in the Navy is you sort of normally do two years on a ship, two years on a shore base, but uh, in the role of Gavin's been in, tri-cat support, it's always sort of like we look at it as a three year posting because there's quite a lot involved in there. You, get, you learn a lot, learn a lot, then all of a sudden they shift you on. So there's a huge learning curve there. I was working at Bristol with Gavin and I was um, head of tri-service tri catering policy. So all the rules and regulations, how much per man per day there. So, but we've had a big input into trying to move TriCat forward. We're not version one of TriCat, it's version whatever it is. And it has progressed, but we feel it is the time to bring the, the Navy into the future. And there's this thing called the web, it's amazing. Yeah, so that, that, that's the, the way we're looking at going there. Uh, obviously, I've left that policy role now. I was there for three and a half, four years, and I'm now just in a holdover job before going to head of catering for the Royal Navy. So it's got quite a big position there, sort of bit, you know, look, looking forward to that. But I will still have a, a vetted interest in progression of our system tricat, hopefully onto Saffron or whatever we're going to call it to, to hit the Navy, maybe tricat web. We call it TriCat, it's going to be Tri-Service Catering. That is at the minute, it's only the Navy that really use it, but we will bring the Army and the Air Force. They're, they're even more antiquated than us. They're still on spreadsheets. Yeah, so yeah, at least we're sort of one step ahead of those guys. Don't make any other stuff, do they? Right, helps. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So, um, yeah, what, what do we do? We've gone on about what, what we've done. You know, we're not making anything up here, so you can you know, put it out there. But this, these facts, they're just off the Royal Navy web page there. So, yes... We are a military force, but yeah, we, we do cover a lot, a lot more things. Yes, we're here to prevent conflict. We're here for international partnerships around the world with our sort of NATO colleagues, to protect our economy, because we are an island, 
We buy security at sea, obviously, because, like I said, we are an island, a good 70% of the, the produce and it was all imported into our country. There is the element of rent to fight. But the, the big main one that we sort of try and harp on as we use on there is the humanitarian aid. Uh, if we're going on, if the ships are going on a seven, eight month deployment, they will take humanitarian aid stocks with them. Or we have got um, <coughs> RFA, Royal Fleet Auxiliary, tankers and ships that are just going around, stopping up there. They will have disaster relief stores on them. So at the drop of a hat, we can then say, right, we need to go and sort out. There's been a hurricane in the West Indies. We can get our ships out there and provide the support. All the ship's company are trained in that. Before the ships go on a big deployment, they have a big training package, a seven-week training package, where you have subject matter experts within the Navy in Plymouth. They go down there, and then these guys go through every scenario. You start off quite lightly, and it ramps up and ramps up. It just gets the ship's company ready. So when it comes to week seven, you pass your final, we call it war game, and literally, so it just gives the, the command up in London that control everything, that, that comfort, that, that, that ship can be self-sufficient no matter what's thrown at it when it's out in the ocean on its own and they're having to make decisions and got people there doing it for them. Uh, with, with the likes of the humanitarian aid, Gavin has done that first hand. Yeah, so um, joined in 2003, um, a year later I was um, on HMS Chatter and we did disaster relief out in Sri Lanka. So does anyone remember the tsunami 2004 Boxing Day? So I was um, 19 years old, believe it or not. I'd hard paper on. Yes, yeah, sure. I know. Um, so um, we were supposed to see for Christmas, um, and then we were supposed to be in Dubai for New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you know, everyone along to the side, and a few drinks and that. However, the tsunami on Boxing Day had, had different plans for us. So we were, went to Dubai, we had to store ship up to the maximum holdings of endurance, um, because we didn't know what our task is, such would be. Um, within 12 hours, we got all the stores on board, back to sea, straight over to Sri Lanka to help out. However, we didn't know what our task was, but everyone else back in the UK did, because the good old UK government went, right, picture us chatting, we'll go and do this. And we're like, oh, are we? So we're just getting like, phone calls and emails from friends and family, oh, you'll have to do a bit of disaster relief. Oh, thanks for telling us, <laughs> like. Um, so um, we went over there, um, we had to anchor off for now, we've, we've flown in by helicopter, but based on the endurance kind of thing, we had to feed ourselves, we didn't know how long we were going to be in, in that scenario for. So we obviously stored to the maximum level of endurance, so you're Obviously, your fridge freezers and that only something you can get in there and use other, other compartments on board. So, we had a schoolroom on there, believe it or not, and that was just full of different, you know, pasta, rice, and all, all the dry stores as well. Um, because when we go ashore, we have to take rations and food with us because we're not just feeding ourselves, we obviously have to feed the, the people we're, we're helping. Um, and as the tsunami did a lot of devastation, I think it was something like 130,000 killed or something. So, it was a, a big, big effort. It was there for two weeks, did what we could, and then back on our merry way. Yeah. And the British are here, I've got to see anyone. Gavin has mentioned endurance there, and we, we'll come on to that in that next aspect. of that, That's the way we differ with our catering in the Royal Navy on the ships, as compared to you guys in, in like, civilian industry. Uh, yeah, so we, we just touched base last year. You'll find that we're really prepared, this Gavin and I. We sat in the bar last night and thought, do we need to write any notes? But no, we're just, we're just winging. So we maybe sort of go back to the odd point. So uh, bear with us, and I've got, I did make a note this morning actually here. So what the government try and sell us as, we, we like, they like to call us like a rapid reaction force. You know, that they can say if there's an instance within 14 days, they can fully man a couple of ships to get out and do whatever, to go and join up with whatever ships out on deployment at the moment. I mean, some of you may not know this, some of you may not, but there's a thing called CASD, which is the Continuous At Sea Deterrence. For the past 50, we celebrated 50 years this year, that for every day of the year, for those 50 years, there's been a submarine deployed somewhere in the world just keeping us safe. You know, you know, the, 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 the submarines, and we, we'll come on to that next, you know, that, those boys, you know, they, just, they get extra money for doing it, they're welcome to it. But the, the catering aspects they, they find are even worse than what we've got. You know, you know, they're designed normally for 90 days. We'll come on to the endurance side in a minute, so you see we haven't rehearsed this because we're flipping now. So hold that thought about submarines. So, we go, we go on to the next, next slide and it will become more apparent. So, they're all great. Thankfully, we have got a picture of a carrier out there, so Callum has sort of like, you know, made, made good there, although it's a big decommissioned one. This one is HMS Illustrious, that was on, so that's why I picked it though, it is because my old ship. So, um, as you see there, we, um, the role we play, we, we're sort of ordering provisions, endurance, why this is important, storing arrangements on board, finance, and replenish, replenishment outside of UK waters. So we have to order our provisions. So where are you guys thinking, right, you know, with you guys, it's all about making money and less waste, because we've been going on about that. 
With us, it's more out. Yes, we have a, a, a finance. We do have finance just to make sure. And the current rate at the minute for a ship going to sea is three pounds fifty-five per day per man to feed them for three and a half, three to four meals a day. So you know, you know when you've got a, the aircraft carrier of like twelve, thirteen hundred people, you know, it's it's it does seem a lot of money, but when you sort of break it down, it, it's quite hard to give them a balanced diet. So this is where we come into the endurance. So yes, we have got the financial aspects of it. The waste, we can't really do much about because it's not sort of financially gaining for us. However, endurance. The Tricat elves, I'm going to call them up there, you know, they've worked out all these underground and logarithms, however it works, basically. So we've got our food categories split into different provisions. So you've got basically your proteins, your meat and fish. Then you've got your carbohydrates, potatoes, rice and pasta, and then you've got vegetables. So within vegetables can be tinned, frozen and fresh. Obviously your fresh vegetables are going to be sort of go within two or three weeks because you've got limited space and they only last a certain time. So each cat, they're all broken down. So theoretically, those are your three main items that you can use for a healthy, balanced diet. So for instance, you may have, say, 100 kilo of beef. Now if you have beef for breakfast, lunch and dinner on 130 people, it'll work out that you've got three days worth of beef. I'm not sure if that's a, the right equation, but if you can get the gist of it. <laughs> so it, it works out all you meat. So you put your, so Tricat is very clever. We put all our order in and press endurance summary. And it will come up with meat and fish, 75 days, uh, potatoes, rice and pasta, 80 days, vegetables, 90. So you just work on your lowest category. So you can report back to command, say, I've got 75 days of food on board for 200 people. So we can be self-sufficient for 75 days. Um, and as, as, as we go on, if you're going on a long deployment, you are going to wedge up to the maximum that you can. And we, you know, a lot of the ships nowadays, they're quite old, you have very, very bad you know, fridges and freezers, there's lots of fragility. I have made the front page of the sun, not the page seven fella, but I did make, make the front page of the sun when I was on the good ship Illustrious. I stored up, I said to my engineers, have you done the required maintenance on the fridges? No, no, yes, yes, it's all fine. So I stored up, I had 70,000 pounds worth of food in the freezer, and I get a phone call, so that was all before I went on weekend on the Friday. I get a phone call on the Sunday prior to sailing on the Monday. Oh, Chief, um, we've got a problem with the freezer. It's at minus 7, and they should be at minus 21. So uh, this doesn't bode well, do it? So, of course, we had to sail because we had to get the helicopters on there, more important. And then we came back into port the next day with our towel between the legs with four shake-ons on the jetty for me. So I'd load 70,000 pounds worth of food into these jetties. So then the engineers defrost the freezer that they should have done in the first place. So then that's 12 hours later to then restore the freezers. But, but of course, by that time, everybody really, really made up for this. They're coming off and all the bags and boxes are splitting. So I had 70 lucky dip bags. I was allowed to take two of these chilcons with me in the hangar. And I had 70 lucky dip bags that you could just say, right, okay then, right, let's today, we get, because the, they're coming with their list, the chefs, what they wanted from the stores to match the menu. And I'd say, right, give them three lucky bags. And then they'd get like um, three loaves of bread half a box of kippers, two haggis, <laughs> and a packet of sausages. They're going, well, we we'll do that. Just create something. Come on, I'll give it to you for free. So, yeah, the, the, these are the, the, the issues that, that we come up against. Um, so, the command are given, given a, from, from in London, they're given the details of their pre-deployment planning. You are to sail with 90 days' worth of food. So, you've got to get your store up to that level. So, this is where it comes, yeah, it's good for our chefs with their craft skills because we can't be wedging up all our small compartments with gattos and short, you know, pies that are all made up because they just take up too much room in the packaging when, you come to, when you're looking at sort of like a bo box of beef rump or whole chickens. So it's good for our chefs in their development that they're not reliant on just having a bo box of pies and put them in. So it, in that sense, it's good. But thankfully, due, due to Tricats, we are able to work out that endurance. And it, it is quite a fair... You know, normally it does go down by day by day. Some, some things may go up, up a bit and some may go down, but it, it, invariably it is a day for day. So, you know, it does work, so why are we changing it? Chief, you can go over a bit now. Talking. Yeah. Right, so, um, which ones have you touched on? All of them, probably. Yes, yeah, so, um, so finance. So, um, the finance, John, in his previous job, he, he determined what the finance was per person per day. So, um, let's say three pounds fifty-five per person per day now. Um, doesn't sound like a lot of money, but most of the ships are doing quite well using that. Um, so finance for us, we actually, to me, and I get quite a lot of sick this, it's not real money. You know, as a, as a caterer, if I'm in the red, I'm in the red, I'm in the black, I'm in the black. Because there's no 
follow on action. We don't see any real money as, as you might do kind of thing or you know, balancing your books or anything like that. Because what happens is we order the food, it turns up in the jay, we store it, we then bring it on charge or we call it on the TriCast system, and then as the, the chefs need it, the feed the chef's company, it gets issued to the galley to use. Obviously it's got a finance attached to it, um, and then at the end of, end of every month we close the accounts, it'll give us our final balance figure for income and expenditure, that gets fed back to fleet, and that's it. Basically, you know, if, if you're massively in debt, if I say, well, why is that? And you just say, well, you didn't give me enough money, or we're on different operations. A ship would normally, well, they're all different, will make money when they're alongside, because they're feeding less people, and they'll lose the money when they're at sea. So it's a bit like swings and roundabouts. Um, so finance is, you know, it used to be a big thing um, for when you joined up. In the yeah, I mean, yeah, it used to be, like, if, you, if you had, had your accounts, you know, the stores people, you know, so that they'd lost an engine on part, oh, don't worry, we can write that off, it's only a quarter of a million pounds. If you were 70p over in the red in your catering account, my life, you're up in front of the captain and you're going to lose your, your rank. You know, and it's sort of, you know, the, you know you're like, well, why? Then, change, but then, you know, they're, they're saying, well, in that case, the quality of the food drops. Because if you're at sea for 30 days, all the kids, all, they, all you've got to look forward to on board is, you wake up, you have your breakfast, you go to work, you have your lunch, go back to work, they go training and have their tea. They're thinking, all right, okay, breakfast again tomorrow. And it's that routine. If you see for a while, you soon get to realise, you just forget what day it is. So, you know, definitely on Friday, Friday, you, so it's always quite good, you always try and mix up a bit, because Friday is always fish day. Friday lunch, fish and chips. So every now and then you put a pound of, pound of, pound of herring in there and smack it in on a Wednesday. So do fish and chips on a Wednesday, they all think it's Friday. So we'll get excited for the sport that's going to come on tomorrow and Saturday. But a, yeah, so yeah, there are sort of key days. You know, so it's fish and chips on a, on a Friday lunch, steak and chips on the uh, steak, steak night sea on Saturday, and obviously roast dinner on a Sunday. So yeah, it's just different days normally. Yeah, you normally chuck in a theme night there, so curry, maybe Wednesday is a theme night. So it just breaks up the knotted because oh, they've got nothing else to think about. If they're just out there cruising on their own, you know, well, I wonder what's for lunch. Oh, that was like crap. Oh, yeah, that's, that is my best thing. Yeah. I sell a naval warship, there's about 12 chefs in the kitchen. And my, my, my pundit is there's normally 250 chefs on board and they put the worst 12 in the kitchen because everybody coming through that counter is an expert uh, yeah, at your job. <laughs> you know, and they're like that. You know, and, you know, obviously, you can see I'm not quiet, chef. And I walk around the ship and I go into the ops room on the bridge. What are you doing here, chef? I said, well, you come to my place to work every day. Well, come on, I'll come up here and have a look at what you're doing. Oh, well, um, yes, okay, yes, mm, yeah, this does that. So, you know, it, it, it is hard work. Uh, when I was on the illustrious, I said, I'd, you know, we, we did uh, a four-month deployment. It was about 120 days. Now, those 120 days, we had 14 alongside. And seven of those were in the last two weeks when we had the Queen coming on board. So, literally, I was about 14, 30, no, 26 grand in debt when I got back from that trip. They go, my God, why are you that? I said, well, because of, you know, we spend one day alongside and then 30 days at sea feeding 900 people. You know, they've got nothing else to do but eat. You know, and, uh, yeah. but, you know, a lot, you know, that's a lot of them. Or, or you have the Good Ideas Club, or the officers mainly. Bloody hell, Chief, we have run out. Yeah, the curry was lovely, but we could have done with some coriander. And I said, oh, I do apologise. The Tesco Express that we're throwing behind us has just run out of that. Uh, what do you mean, we haven't got it then? We've been at sea for three weeks, you know what I mean? And they're expecting coriander on their curry. <laughs> Which is, yeah, yeah. Right, so, I'll, I'll, um, I'll touch on replenishment at sea. Check the time. But no, let's go to storing arrangements. Submarines, we're all about submarines. Of course, they're quite old, <laughs> the submarines. <laughs> it's well rehearsed. It's good, isn't it? Oh, there's a question, Dan. We'll come up to that one. Okay, um, submarines, because they're quite old, uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they weren't very really well designed. And literally, their freezer is a hatch in the, in the floor. So you open this hatch up and then the freezer goes down. So when they're storing up their freezer, they literally have to decant every bit of food out of the box and put it in individually. So, so to add to that, the fridge is also, you'll go down into the freezer to go through the freezer and get to the fridge. Yeah, so literally, you open it up and there's like, you know, 500 chickens looking at you that you have to move all out. To them to get to the fridges, so you you know you try and mix it up that when when the stuff goes into there, it's you know there is a bit of chicken, there is some lamb, there is pork, and there is beef, so they can have a varied menu. But you know th these boys, th these submarines were designed to go to sea with 90 days worth of endurance. The command then up that say, no, come on, let's go 120. So that, yeah, it's another you know, another month almost there, and then one of the submarines has just done about 145 days at sea. 
you know, and for the caterers to manage that is quite awesome. So we're always looking at stuff. We did years ago have really crap dehydrated stuff, but there's some products out there now that are actually really good. And we've given it to the sub manager, try this, and they've given us feedback for what is good and what isn't. So there we go. Go on, Chief, you go next. So I'll finish the submarines now. <laughs> I'm brief. Right, um, replenishment outside of the UK water. So if we're on the deployment, um, we have the uh, RFAs, all fleet auxiliary. Um, so I was stretching. So in terms of questions, on a 125 day deployment, what's the, what's the breakdown of the maintenance in terms of like three ounces of protein? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've got an yeah. um, issue of naval medicine and they've given us out a, a pro forma. So it is it's about four ounces of protein. There's a guide there. We don't really, you know, we, I say we follow it, but you know, for, for a classic example, for a lunch, Breakfast, there's always cooked breakfast, but you've got cereals on there. Uh, lunchtime, there, it's, if you're in really hot climates, you would normally just have sort of one warm choice, and then you just normally have a baguette bar and salad bar. But again, it is all depending on what you can get in, obviously, because fresh fruit and veg will only last for two weeks anyway. And then of an evening meal, it's like three, three choices. Uh, three hot choices with like two, two potatoes, three vegetables. Years and years ago, there was a, a big problem with like the education of people, as in they didn't realise that if they ate burger and chips every day, it wasn't good for them, yeah. But you know, and it, you, know, it, you know, you literally would. You know, I know we've got the traffic light systems now, or various systems. But a lot of people did not know back then, whether what their background on what a healthy balanced diet is. Now we've seen a real swing in it. That, like I said, they're all bloody experts now in it. You know, when they come through the counter. But you know, we, we're looking at other things that we can give them with the brown rice, the whole meal pasta. So you know, and there's a lot of fitties on board. So you know, it word gets around on, on, on how they do that. Cool. Right, we'll get there. <laughs> so the RFAs will come with us. So if we're on a long deployment, you normally have a, an RFA associated to that ship. They will carry extra stores just in case we need them. Um, if you know, our, our deployment changes, we have CSC, we can't go alongside to store up. So if we have an RFA with us, we, um, we have a replenishment at sea. So we'll have the big tanker come alongside us. And then the stores will shift across. We did have a slide, didn't we? We did have a slide, but Callum wouldn't let us have it. <laughs> So the stores have to be shifted from one, one vessel to another at sea. So you might have seen videos and stuff and how ships nearly colliding together and that. So the, the stores will come across on, on um, a RAS rig, so again, pulley, the pulley system, and on a pulley system, and, or, or, or a helicopter will, will land on deck, pick up stores, come across, drop them off. So that's your RFA system. Because we're not always ordering from UK suppliers, we, when we de deploy, we'll take as much, obviously, UK produce as we can. The main ones would be the sausage and bacon, because you're going to have to make the waste, and you're not going to get them products as, as, as much as you would like to. Um, so when we get um, to other countries now, we have to locally purchase. In years gone by, we used to the, the, the three challenges. So three challenges that turn up on the J, they come on board, and they go, right, this is the price we'll give you for this, and then we can you know, take you ashore, show you your warehouse. Lash up on the beer and that. Brown envelope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, all the backhanders. That's all gone now as well. So now we've got the um, MLS, which is the maritime. Maritime. Food people. Yeah, so. Maritime yeah. <laughs> 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 logistics support. Maritime logistics support. So maritime logistics support is one big contract, which is, is um, obviously the MOD oversee it. Uh, we are told which supplies we can and can't use. Um, so there's no more of the, the backhanders kind of thing. However, I think there's about two or three different ports that aren't covered by MLS. Um, so the ships have to basically do the, do the tender process. So um, I think one, as we call it, did I brought, um, out in Mexico many years ago. We asked for, um, I think it was like 200 chickens. Oh yeah, we just buy 200 chickens. And then on the jet the next day was 200 chickens. Literally, live chickens in the cages. <laughs> <laughs> Crack on, score them yourself. No, you can take that back. So um, yeah, it's quite good what you, uh, you do get. So, so it is good work with, with the, the port agency contract. You can just email them, your, your chander is, this chant here, you know, send us your product list, they send it to you, all the prices there, but we revalue the cost of it. So you could be somewhere where chickens are £10, but we could just revalue it to the price that we would pay from our English supplier, because that's what our £3.55 is worked out per day. So you can't sort of like go on the foreign prices, it's a try will revalue it for us and give us the price in the UK. So, yeah, right. so, so that's good there. Right, before we go to the next slide, I've got a couple of questions. Right. How do we deal with allergies and tolerances at sea? Right, so we have to abide by all the same rules that you guys do now. Um, we actually don't recruit anyone now with an aller aller any allergies. So, <laughs> I know. So, years ago, we, we, we both worked with a chef who had a peanut allergy. And it used to be quite funny to 
Just well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> however, because you know, he could only go on ships when there would be a medical officer on board, um, there wasn't very many of them ships around at the time, so he actually, after 12, 13 years service, yeah. he, he had to leave. Full medical pension and stuff like that, but we're not actually recruiting anyone that has an intolerance or an, 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 no, not intolerance, an allergy. Um, however, we still got to do all the documentation. So you'll go to, ship, go to sea with 200 people, you know who them 200 people are. You got to, each one of them has to do a medical on board, so you know there's no, no allergens or anything. However, we still got to do all, all the same documentation and keep hold of it as well, even though no one's going to go down because no one's got an allergy. Yeah. Um, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> Allergens. Allergens, yeah, food intolerance. And then it was um, the, the um, sickness, um, food poisoning. Right, so believe it or not, I don't think there's been any confirmed reported cases of food poisoning being blamed on Navy chefs, believe it or not. In, in, the, six, in the 16 years I've been in, most of the time, if you've been, been ashore, it's definitely foreign, and you're drinking and eating kebabs off the street kind of thing. Um, they come back on board and they blame the chef or you can be food poisoning. No, it's that dodgy kebab you got from yeah. Mohammed down the country, yeah, down the road, kind of thing. But, um, <laughs> not necessarily Mohammed, anyone. Um, <laughs> no, but it's true. We, I was, yeah, we thought it brought me a week in Bombay, a week in Madras, and a week in Karachi, and like every had the runs. And the doctor's going, must be you chefs. <laughs> really? You know, uh, you know, we've all, what do you mean you've all got to play? How else are we going to cook? You know what I mean? So, you know, there, there is that element of that. Well, I'm conscious of time because Gary... Right, so I, how many yeah. chefs have been, um, chefs on board to feed 130 crew? So, about two chefs, two or three chefs? Two or three chefs, yeah. So, um, for that, you'd have one that's duty, which would do the evening meal, one that's standby, do the, the lunchtime, and, yeah. We're yeah, 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 yeah. suffering, they're about 130 people. Yeah. 130 people, so, got three chefs on there. Well, one night worker, one day worker, and then one just sort of doing bread and veg prep and stuff like that, basically. So doing that, you know, for three months. God, blimey, yeah. Do we still get allowance of rum? No, but I don't mind rum. He's more rum. I'll have a gin, so everyone's done. We only do doubles. Yeah, so that's a no. But 19, 1970, I think, 70, 71, the rum allowance went. Right, food waste. So, food waste, in terms of if the fridges and freezers go down, we get um, a full survey. So... Medical officer on board, or um, and the captain have to sign off to say food unfit. That's been a good cheap correctly. Andrew, is that you? <laughs> what can I say, Gav? You said you could make it last night. Um, no buttons. Oh dear. Come on, Chief, come and sit down. You're embarrassing now. See what? <laughs> who's, who's in the peace, please, um, <laughs> presentation of the moment? Um, right, so, um, oh, keep going, you're only eating. You swore that as well, you told me not to swear. Well, where were we? We had this planned out so well. Right, food waste, right, food waste, food waste. Food waste, yeah, so, um, it, after a meal, we've got, just, just got a GDU, work right, with G, GDU, that churns it all up, churns it all up, and then spits it out into the sea, basically. But we're not allowed to use it, is it 12 miles from shore? Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, so 12 miles, we've got to be out, out from 12 miles from shore and then do it out there. Um, so that, that's the main bit of the food. Right, we have got one more slide. Can we, can we go on? You carry on. Happy days. <laughs> um, right, challenges we face. Here we go. You mostly find that we have prepared this. We've gone through the menu. But there's not a picture of a submarine in case you know what one looks like. So maintaining endurance operations. So we, we go back to endurance on life. We have to report in weekly how much food we can live on a, on a balanced diet. Goes up to Northwood in London, they had a big war board up there, all around there. So all of a sudden a disaster hits in the West Indies, and they've got HMS Albion up by sort of America. Right, how much food has Albion got on board? It's got 35 days. Right, how long is it going to take to get from there? Points A to B. It's five days. So they've now got 30 days worth of endurance. So they can go out and help for 30 days, being self-sufficient. Then you've got to start thinking, how, how much of our food have we then got to give when we're there? So that, that's when you come back to do and start doing daily reports to London, exactly how much food you've got on board. And then they can then start planning in when you're going to go out of area, because funny old thing, there's been a disaster there, there's going to be no provisions, <laughs> when you can go out of area to get stuff, or someone can come to you with stuff. So, you know, that's why it's imperative that those figures are correct or with, the, with the endurance. It's, 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 yeah, on endurance as well, there's different ways that we can um, prolong the endurance as well. So, we've got what is called fleet portion, and... Yeah, <laughs> yes. So basically, yeah, consumption. Consumption. Feet consumption. consumption. So fleet portion is where we, the chef will serve the person, so obviously you can portion it out. 
and the consumption is when they just help themselves. So themselves. nine times out of ten, the ship's company will just help themselves. However, if we go into a wartime situation or disaster relief, we don't have a fleet portion, which gives us longer endurance because we will basically portion out there. And again, if you're there to feed them, if they come out, or can I come around again? You say, oh, can you come around at the end of the meal to make sure everything's been through? Yeah, that helps get rid of food waste as well, feed them twice. Um, but then, you know, if you're feeding them, you say no, you know, you'll you work out then, you just go to proper strict catering, like you say, three ounces, four ounces of meat, right, that's the thing. And you, you'd pre carb all your joints to make sure, okay, right, there, there's your roast, there's your roast, rather than trying to do it nice and fresh on the counter. So it's just these, the, you know, it's all challenges that we face there, but then it's good for the chefs, it gives them a the good skill set rather than reliance on, you know, short, you know, what we call short side products, your, your ready made pies and pizzas and pasties. Right, food safety, because it's routines cheap, you're all over that, aren't you? Yeah, so food safety, so we also have the EHOs come on board as well um, and do their checks now. They have to give us 24 hours notice, so they can't just pitch up and say, I'm here to check you, so we get 24 hours notice. Um, we have tier 3 compliance, so we have um, personnel at different base ports. They can come on at any time as well and check our, our documentation, um, which, you know, and, and our temperatures and make sure we're doing the correct routines. So we're just quite intrigued by the the, the, um, the saffron bit with the, the paperless kitchen yep. because we actually have reams and reams of it. You know, we have what's called a galley management record, so it has all the, the meals listed on there. Your temperature records, your fridge record, your allergens, all that has to be ticked and everything and filled out. So literally by the end of the week, you've got a, a, a pack of paper like that for every single meal we've cooked and your cleaning records and that as well. So. Food safety, we, we have to abide by all, all the same rules and that. Um, there's no crown immunity anymore. Um, it's where you used to be able to kind of break the law and get away with it. Um, not anymore. So if anything does happen or you're not adhering to the, the correct procedures, um, then you are um, potential prosecution because we won't, we won't be protected anymore. Um, so yeah, food safety. Allergens, I think we come from that question. We are compliant with them, but we try and avoid it the best we can with that. Shortage of personnel, I'm sure in the industry, uh, we, when we speak to people, there's a big shortage of chefs and front of house, and we, we experience that now. We're having a big recruitment drive. We're actually going down the realms of going and seeing the army, the RAF, because they're not really deployed doing it at the minute. Saying, right, do your guys want to come over for a year? So, caveat to we, we've got about 12 army chefs at the minute. Or, yeah, the, 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 the caveat is that they have to go on a ship that's being deployed, basically. So, they're not just sat in base port. So, these guys have so got the army on on ships a minute, RF on ships at the moment as well. We're looking at sort of people that have left the Navy, do you want to rejoin, what terms do you want to join in? Yeah, and then it's then getting them through the training pipeline. So, yeah, we, we are suffering there. But we've got there the secondary right. duties. Just a quick question. Yeah, yeah. Based on that, obviously with your, sorry, Max Air Force, I know it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So, no word for the restaurant was always going in, in, in the days in terms of, obviously, everyone's going to be training now for, for catering together, everything for engineering together, that sort of stuff. So do you foresee us being one force? Well, you know, I personally sit back and we've got a big term. Years ago, we had all the, the training establishment in all the shopping army. There was these big, huge, horrible tower blocks there were. And on each floor, there was like, you know, seven kitchens. Navy had a floor, RF had a floor, the rest were army. So they all branched out. So now, um, there's a base in Winchester called Worthy Down, that all the, um, what we call the, the, the supply area are going to. So all the chefs are going there, Army and Air Force, Navy. The Army and Air Force are already there, Navy moving up there. Uh, the Navy have uh, changed their training pattern, what they do, as in the course of the, all the, they're all doing the same basic chef training course at that level. So there's no reason why, you, you know, because everybody's really having problems recruiting. The Navy are the best at the moment, but it's still like a five month training pipeline. So there's no reason why the Army and the RF can't jump in with the Navy classes and vice versa. So, you know, it could possibly go down that way that you just have a, you know... Tri-service chef. Tri-service chef, one hat fits all. Maybe down that route. Just sort of like, yes, we, I know we've gone over time. We aren't going over, Andrew. Keep going, you're only eating the chase. Part. The bar's going to open in a minute, happy. Um, right, secondary duty. So not only do we then uh, have to cook on board, you know, you then got all the compartments that your food's in, you know, whatever, you've got to clean them. You could be part of a firefighting party. One of my secondary roles will be as a, as a caterer or a manager, I was then also in charge of all the firefighting and flooding exercises on the ship that you have to do every fourth day, which is the right pain, and all the firefighting equipment. So, yeah, it's, it's trying to get bal the balance of life. You're asking the kids, we're short staffed at the minute at sea, and the kids are working really hard, and then you get, you're chucking them extra secondary duties, and then you want them to do more in their time off, and it's just, that's, I think, one of our biggest retention problems, the amount of work 
that we're giving these guys out there. I mean, although Callum did put our aircraft carrier up there, the new one, the QE, is three times the size of the illustrious that I was on. We had a crew of about 900 people on there. They said they could do it lean manning with about six to 700 people on this carrier. You know, and all of a sudden, they've had about another, about three uplifts of personnel, almost to take it up to sort of running crew of about eight, nine to a thousand people, 900 to a thousand people. So they just realised it's too big to manage. So yeah, th th these are the things we're issuing to. Equipment, um, it's got better our equipment pipeline. We're trying to get all the ships having the same sort of equipment so they can all be trained in it. We do work with engineers to say that if a ship's going into refit and the ovens are a bit old but they're not completely knackered, we'll send them to the engineering schools. So the young tra engineer trainees can then train on the equipment that they uh, then go onto on the ship. Well, the day before they're trained on something that went sort of out in Nelson's time, basically. So, you know, th you know these, these are sort of challenges. We have to think out the box. How can it benefit the chefs? Right, well, let's give them our old equipment so they can practice on it. Um, years gone by, you know, we take, right, we're going to see, we'll take a load of pack, spares package with us, wouldn't it? You know, and uh, it's cut, even, uh, so they've cut down the, the supply chain life, life of it. No, you don't need any of that. And then it sort of all your oven blows up on day one of deployment, and then you, you're waiting for stores to get flown in. So it's an absolute nightmare on that, that side of life. Especially on equipment as well, like the QE, you'd think of all the best, you know, all the, the brand new ovens and stuff like that, but these ovens were purchased, similar fridge and freezers, 20 years ago. So the plans for the QE were, were 15, 20 years ago. So we purchased all the stuff over there, put it in the warehouse, and then you fit it all into a new brand new ship. Yeah. But the company, think, yeah. the company supplies it, doesn't. Make that oh, yeah. for, for the QE, they bought the equipment in the ovens 28, 2008, 9 when I was in the equipment job. Put the storage with the company, but however, they, don't, don't worry, we've got a guarantee on them from the set to work date, not from when you bought them. So, set to work, brilliant, yeah. And they were very good, we had common term ovens we were using at the time, so yeah, quite, quite a good piece of equipment. Set to work, guarantee, brilliant. Then the company went skin, so like, yeah, yeah, you're like, great, well done, kept safe, thank you. Yeah, so th th these issues you have because they, they just, you know. You want to sort of get that stuff there. So I think we're slowly getting there. Right, last one, Gavin, healthy eating. I think we've covered that, haven't we? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, healthy eating is a big thing now in the armed forces. So um, setting sea lords directive is, uh, he's got a healthy eating directive, um, and he's also always asking questions of, well, you knew that last <laughs> job, yeah. how can we provide a balanced diet to the, to the sailors and that? Because a lot of sailors are, used to be, unfit, unhealthy, Due to the 10 pints of lager and about it every night kind of thing. Um, it wasn't due with the food on board, it was what they were doing on the social side of things outside of their, their main job. But now a, a, things have changed, it's a total circle. Yeah. So alcohol um, consumption has gone down massively in, in the Navy since I've been in, um, and fitness has gone up massively. So everyone is basically um, more aware of well, yeah, yeah. More, more aware of healthy eating. But also we, we promote it as well. So. As John said, most times um, you have a full cook breakfast every morning. You know, new caterers, young people, when I did it on the last year, we started changing it. We say, well, you're not going to have bacon, sausage, fried eggs every morning. Put a bit of smoked salmon out, put you know, different fruit cocktails and stuff like that. Give them an option. If they, and if they want to go for the full cook meal, they can, but they, this is a variation there. You give them the option. Um, and basically, the, the, works, the, yeah, the older, older people. The, did, did the old crusties were like, yeah, well, this is my day. Well, do one and leave them, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> the answers come through. It, is, yeah, they, oh, well, it, was, it never used to be like that, but yeah, this is the way we're changing. We've got, we've got to change. I think that is. That is it, yeah, but that was the last thing. We're not going back on that. Excellent. Thing. Right, hopefully, please do join me in thank you, John and Gav. <laughs> <laughs> on form as normal. This is what our meetings are like. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to start off. Thank you very much. Pick up with the teams. Um, and we're going to break the coffee back in in 15 minutes into the next session. So thanks for putting the questions up there and keep that going through the day.